<laughs> and so uh, we're excited after the year you just had to talk to Matt Brash again. How you doing, man? How, how does it feel this year? Dude, I'm doing, I'm doing great. I'm just happy to be back out in Arizona, get things moving again. We've been having some spring training games going on, so it's just nice to be back out here. Do you remember that interview with Salk last year? Like he remembers it or no? I, he came I away with a new favorite radio huh? host. Yeah. Oh, he did? <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> oh, nice. <laughs> Very good. Because you always wonder sometimes. Sure. Oh, I wonder if we left a mark like he left a mark. I would doubt us. that. Yeah. yeah. No, of course. Yeah, but you, well, you left a mark last season, man. It, it now, you know, you always hear young players say, whew, having that experience under the belt, how much different is this spring training from that one where Justin and Mike were watching you a year ago? Yeah, I, I think it's a huge difference for me. Just coming in, and um, I feel like I know everybody, um, not just players, but, like, training staff, coaches. So it just makes life a lot easier, kind of going in with a plan and being so much more comfortable and just kind of being myself and, enjoy my time down here. I feel like last year is more of like a, a tryout, like I was trying to earn my spot. And this year, obviously, I'm still competing, but um, I'm more just enjoying it, getting to know my new teammates and all that. And um, I'm out here. Well, and maybe you know your role a little bit more this year. I mean, last year you were still competing for a spot in the starting rotation. You tried it. You transitioned to a reliever. Mm -hmm. How do you feel about that decision now? I know you and I talked very briefly at the end of last year. Yeah. How do you feel about it today? Yeah, I mean, that was, that was big for me. Um, knowing my role as a reliever right now. Uh, it was kind of something in the off season though, that I had to um, kind of decide with the Mariners. They kind of gave me the decision if I want to be a starter or reliever, and they're supporting me. And I think we both agreed that my role in the bullpen is really big for this team. And um, I was really looking forward to coming in the spring and knowing my role and just kind of coming in, enjoying it, and kind of zoning in on what I need to do as a reliever. So um, I think it was the right decision. And so, yeah, it was kind of interesting. It sounds like, you know, the way Jerry made it sound, and I don't know whether he, maybe it was I was interpreting it that way. It was a sort of, hey, you were going to maybe start, and then it was, hey, if you're going to go to WBC, then you probably need to stay in the pen. Yeah. Is, is that how that went down? Um, I would say the WBC came after the fact that okay. I was already coming in as a reliever. So we, I talked with the Mariners about it for a while, and um, obviously we have a lot of really good starters. And, um, our bullpen, uh, I feel really well at the end of the year, and I fit really well with what we're trying to do. And, um, it just seemed like a good fit for both of us. And then it just happened that the World Baseball Classic um, was this year, and it was a good spot for me to do it, and I'd go in as a reliever because sometimes – being a starter in the World Baseball Classic yeah. uh, is tough, especially with young guys. So me being a reliever coming to big league camp is kind of weird. Does this shut the door on your future as a starter, or is this now this is I'm going to be a reliever forever, this is what I want? I don't think it shuts the door. Uh, we also talked about that, and I think I would like in the future to have another chance to start. I've always been a starter. I've always kind of dreamed to do that, and I feel like I, I can. But just right now, I think it's about getting big league experience, and this team is really, really good. And um, I feel like I fit really well in this bullpen. So uh, for now, you'd be a reliever, and whatever down the road happens, but I don't think there's any doors closed at this point. Matt Brash here with us, but you didn't rest on your laurels. It wasn't like the season ended, and you just said, ah, I'll just shut it down, and, and I'll build back up here at spring training. You went to work, a lot of conversation about your work at driveline and, and maybe even working an additional pitch. Talk us through that process. Yeah, so in past off seasons, it's kind of just been me on my own. So I went to school down in the Niagara Buffalo area. So COVID season, I, I went down there and just trained. And last off season, I did the same thing. So um, I wanted more of like a professional approach to it and get some pitching experience from other people. I've always kind of just taught myself. So um, I went to driveline, go that road. I always want to try it and um, had a great time doing it. What was that place like? Yeah, so place in Seattle is amazing. So right after the season, a couple of our, uh, like me and Festa, we went down there and threw for them. And um, that place is amazing and a lot of stuff about my body that I would never have heard of before. So it's cool to learn about that. And then, yeah, I've been uh, working on a cutter a little bit with them. Um, they presented to me that could uh, free up my arsenal, maybe get some more swings and misses, be in the zone a little more. Um, so I've been playing around with that. I haven't thrown it too much. It's still more of a uh, like a pitch in progress kind of right now, but I really like the shape of it, how much I'll throw it. Well, you and Salk are besties. I mean, we made, we made that clear seven minutes ago Obviously when we started best. this and everything. Right. So let me just tell you, your bestie was trying to figure this out. I was. It, it, it was confusing to me, right? You got a fastball, you got a slider, you got a curveball. Everything yeah. kind of breaks glove side. Yeah. I, I would assume, I would have thought that if you were working on something new, it would be something to break mm -hmm. arm side, a change up or a split or something like that. So I was surprised yeah. that you would want another pitch that breaks uh, glove side. Yeah, I, I feel so. I've tried to change up in the past and. 
and I, I can't throw one. It's a little inconsistent. I, I struggle uh, pronating in the ball to go the other way, so I've always been able to spin it really well. So a cutter to me in my head has always been an option, and I feel like I could pick it up really fast. So uh, when they presented the idea of this cutter being in between my four seam, which has some arm side run, like sometimes I get some two seam on it, and then obviously these big sweepers and my, my slider and my curveball, I have no middle ground. So mm. like the middle of the grid it's middle ground, is so. wide open. Jeez. So with this cutter, <laughs> it seems to be just a pitch that I can uh, get a little bit of horizontal movement, uh, but also be super hard. And it, it, it kind of um, just frees up my four seam and my slider. It's like it, it's supposed to, in theory, get more swings because yeah. cutter has my slider spin, but it comes in there at like low to mid 90s um so then it, it just makes another look for the hitter kind of thing so if the five of us walked into the in and out burger after the show today and you know i don't know there's 100 people in there eating burgers and you surveyed them and said hey look at this group of five walk in here guess who throws it 100 miles an hour <laughs> with one of the nastiest sliders in the history of baseball i don't know if they would all point to you maybe they maybe they would maybe they would i uh yeah i don't think they would how do they, how do you do it that's a good question. <laughs> well, you went to driveline. They told you physiologically. Yeah, they tell you that? I mean, right? Well, I, mean, I thought when they said you had weird fingers. Didn't they say something about your middle finger? <laughs> that helps me spin the ball. Doesn't help me throw. Let me look at your middle. Can I see your middle finger? Whoa! It's normal guy. Bro, look at that. Look at this thing. No, oh, I don't know. Oh, I, hold on. Let me get my phone. Out. I want to take a picture of that thing. Come on. <laughs> Stop. Look at Morris' finger. She's got no, 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 stop. We said we were going to do this, Mora. Hold on. Let's do yeah, it right now. Yeah. Get your fingers up against uh, Matt. Come on. Yeah. Can we do it She's now? got giant yeah. Pringle can finger. She oh, can, my God. She can hit she the was... bottom of a Pringle can. <laughs> Come on. She may, you can throw a slider, baby. I She's know. embarrassed. I can teach you. Please <laughs> teach Mora how to throw a slider. Yeah, do it off the air. Do it, right, do it off the air. Jeez. All right. We got stuff to do later. <laughs> no, but seriously, how do you physiologically, when they evaluate you and they look at your – how do you do that? Um – I, I think it has to do with my training um, that I've kind of always done. So obviously I'm a smaller guy. Um, the training I do is more like explosive, fast twitch stuff. So yep. uh, when I went to driveline and I did their, it's called a mocap. It's basically sensors on your body. You go through your mechanics and they tell you why you throw hard or what you do well. And what I did the best that they'd seen was I moved down the mountain really fast. Hmm. Um, so for me, not having like the weight behind um, the ball and all that, I need to move fast to get down the mound to generate velo. So I rotate really well and I move down the mound fast, and um, that's how I throw hard. So I train that. To so you were not a hockey player growing up in Canada. Were you a hooper? Uh, I, I, I can play basketball a little bit. So yes. I've always been able to jump, um, always been athletic, kind of things like that. So I feel like being a dual sport athlete like that did help. Well, it is interesting, right, because Andres is a tri was a triple jumper. Mm -hmm. Munoz generated all that power and all that force as a really twitchy jumper. I mean, there's got to be something, that correlation, right? Yeah, you can see it in Mooney, too, how well he gets down the mound. Like, his extension down that mound is, is special, and I think that's – obviously contributes to why he throws a million miles an hour. Um, but, yeah, I think growing up just being, a, a, like, playing different sports, being athletic, I've never really gone through, like, I didn't get taught my mechanics. I kind of, it's just natural. Like, I just kind of went and tried to throw hard, and I've stuck with it, and that have, worked, that's what worked for you me. you have to pay for driveline, or does the team pay for it? Like, how does that work? Whoa, whoa, whoa. That's well, personal, I'm just curious, bro. Like, is it an investment you make in yourself, <laughs> yeah, no, or uh, it, does the team offer it? Uh, no, so I, I paid for it. It's something I've always wanted to personal. That's kind of how I put it. Well, and that's why I ask because I think that's yeah. interesting. Is sort of you have a you have a very good first year. You know, you're you're in the playoffs. You're filthy in the playoffs. I mean, like you're really making a name for yourself. And to go and spend your own money to do that, I think says quite a bit, which is why I asked. Yeah, no, I, uh, I've I've like I said, I've always wanted to try it, and I feel like it was a great off season for me to do it after having the year I did and kind of coming into spring training. No, I'm going to be a reliever. It was. Um, something I've always wanted to do, and I, I'm glad have, I did. Have you seen this traject machine? I have not. Okay, but you know what it is, right? Which you know what this thing that? is they have that imitates all the pictures? Oh, yeah, in there, yeah, yeah. in the batting So have you I've gone to see it? it? I haven't seen myself, but I've seen people So, So Shannon was telling us that they put Munoz in there against himself to see what he looked like. <laughs> Are you willing to step in against you? I would love to see what I look like on there. Do I'm you think your slider would make your own knees buckle? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I've never seen it, so we'll, we'll have to we'll have to go take a look. I've been thinking about it because they, I, I was told I might have an opportunity to get in there, oh, that we I might have an opportunity. I would love to see you. So if you're me, yeah. see, I would not – like, if you were going to throw to me, I wouldn't do it because as much <laughs> as I trust you, if you have good command, 
I'm not getting hit uh, with a hundred. Yeah. Sorry, I don't trust myself to get out of the way. I would. I don't think I would want to. I would. Right. It would be unfair. You get in there. I would. No, you wouldn't. <laughs> you would hurt yourself. <laughs> I would love the idea of seeing it, mm-hmm. knowing that the machine doesn't make a mistake. Yeah, right. It can't hit me. Yeah. So if I could see anybody, who should I? What would give me the gr- like a great understanding of what pitching is really looks like in Major League Baseball? I think you should do it. Well, Munoz is a great one, just because of how hard he throws and all that. Um, other guys on our team, I think Curb would be would be a cool guy to see, especially with his new two seamer. Get that on there. Um, I mean, you could really pick anybody. And Luis Castillo, that would be a good one. That would be a chance. <laughs> your your be hands very... would be broken. If you... Well, I don't think I would swing. Oh, you're just going in there. I hands. would just track it. I don't no, think I would swing I don't think at you would it. See it. <laughs> Do you think I wouldn't see it? I don't. If, if, if a... you got 100 pitches, maybe after 100. You'd... Do you think I could bunt one? No. No chance. Absolutely not. Do you think I'd hurt myself? I think you might, like, bunt it into your own. <laughs> 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 to be honest, I'm trying to be mean. But. No, I, it's fine. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I played Little League. <laughs> uh, last two things. We could do this all day, but last two things. Let's spin backward and then forward. Give me the moment that, you know, season ended and you flew home and you're hanging out with your buddies, your parents, family, friends, whatever. Yeah. And that moment from this season that was like, wow, that was freaking cool. Was there, was there a moment that just really, years from now, you'll look back and go, yep, that one sticks. Yeah, I, I think – for me and I think for a lot of guys it's when Cal hit that homer and we clinched and um, just like popping champagne in the locker room and then what I always tell people is there was a group of us that stayed like an hour to two hours after the game finished and we're just hanging out in the uh, dugout like uh, up on the rail just chilling and there's a photo of us doing that and in the background there's still like hundreds of fans behind us like two and a half hours of the game and we weren't even like there wasn't any events going on. Like, we were just on the field talking with each other, and there's still fans out there. So um, it was just crazy the, the support we got, like, down the stretch even into the playoffs, that last playoff game, another one, even though obviously it didn't end how we wanted to. But just the support we got from those fans. Was... How about, there were some great games over the course of this year. You guys really played a lot of really fun we games. Did, I mean, right? that Yankees game, and I think of the, the play you made, sort of the behind-the-back mm-hmm. catch and all that. Yeah. I mean, games like that, did that help get you guys ready for what came your way in September? Yeah, I feel like we did have a lot of really close games, and we had a lot of, like, clutch moments. And I feel like that's kind of what playoff baseball is. It's never really a blowout. Like, teams are never out of it. And um, I feel like we weren't nervous going into the playoffs even though it was a lot of our first ones like it was just another game to us and obviously it's more pressure and stuff but i feel like we got up for that like that's what we that's what we wanted my last thing is now you spin it ahead and we spent some time early early this morning talking about the pitch clock mm-hmm. and just as fans just taking it in after all this experience of all these yeah. years and all of a sudden there's like urgency there's like oh something's gonna urgency. happen yeah. how's that process how's that played out for you yeah so the pitch clock's very interesting for me i tend to work faster anyways but there is moments where i do like to catch my breath because sometimes maybe i I lose it a little bit and i need to go to the rosin bag and take my breath and reset so the pitch clock does speed you up a little bit so it's going to take us some adjustments did you work through that in the minors yeah so in triple a i i did it um obviously the games aren't as big in triple a so maybe i didn't need uh, to take my breath as much, but mm-hmm. um, I feel like I, I'm pretty used to it still. Even in the spring training game, like the last one I threw, I felt like it, I, I was going a little too quick. Um, but it, it's just adjustment for it's for pitchers and hitters. And mm-hmm. A lot of these guys have been in the league for a long time, so uh, it'll take a little bit, but it does speed up the game. I will tell you that. It's a lot. <laughs> I gotta say, like I, I I don't hate it. Yeah. But I can't tell you I like it. I mean, if I'm being honest. <laughs> That's what we do on this show, yeah, as you can tell. I mean, that's what we do. Honest, I, <laughs> yeah. If I didn't have to use it, <laughs> let's just say I would use it. I, I, we were saying earlier, because I don't understand why they want to eliminate yeah. Zach Greinke taking a minute between pitches. Mm-hmm. Like, I get it. Yeah. That's frustrating. That is adding unnecessary time or the, or the hitters that take an hour and a half to get yeah. themselves up to the plate. But can't we let the game play and then if somebody's taking too long put them on the clock, put them on the clock like they do in golf and say hey i'm sorry zach or somebody else like yeah. you can't take 30 seconds between every pitch yeah. but there's something about the urgency that doesn't feel like baseball to me it it it, it feels like i don't know you played in tournaments like as a mm-hmm. kid i remember playing in some in high school where it was like quick pitch tournaments 
Whereas, like, sometimes they even did, uh, you know, two strikes, mm. three I've balls. Done, I've done that before. Yeah. We started on 1-1 one, one count yeah. or whatever. Yeah, I've done that. And, like, I get it. For a tournament, it's kind of a, a novelty. Yeah. Everybody's got to play. And I understand why they do it. Yep. Yeah. But in Major League Baseball? Yeah. I mean, it would be interesting to see what it's like in the regular season with certain guys. But, I mean, for older guys, I can see how hard it could be just being in a routine for 10 yep. years in the yeah. big leagues. And you got to switch it on the spot, especially for hitters. Yeah. Um, so I mean, it, it's gonna be it's gonna be interesting to see how it, how it plays. Out. How far do you drive the golf ball? I, I mean, come I, on, I can get it out there. Come on, I mean, I can get it out there. Yeah. three fifty? No, three twenty. Come on, I'm, I'm not. <laughs> come on, let's hear it. I would. I'm like, I can get over three hundred. Okay, if I. When you yep. get it right. Yep. When I get it. Do you draw? Do you do you? I, I play a little cut. A little cut. Sometimes more than a little cut. <laughs> we call that a slice. Yeah, no. Power fade. Yeah, you. <laughs> you're welcome. You got power good. fade for the guy with the you power know. slider. Yep. Yes, sir. Yep. Matt, thank you so much. Yeah. It's a pleasure to talk to you. It was great watching you last year. We're really looking forward to this year as well. Yeah. Thank you, guys. Appreciate there it, man. You go. There's thank Matt you, man. Brash.